Back to Union Focus Talk Show. Hi, hello, and welcome. It's John O'Sullivan from the Irish Pagan School. And today I'm talking about, well, I'm trying to follow on with some of the stuff that I've been doing so far, which is discussing definition. And if you've caught some of this before, caught some of the other videos, the one I did about being a bard, it's very, very important to understand the nature of words, but also the underlying subtext and subtleties, the kind of cultural inferences that do come true when we use words um, and how it's very important to make sure that we take the time to take a step back and define our meaning of words because they're so crucial in the connection of ourselves to others, be they community, um, to a tribe, family, friends, um, or even spirituality and deities. So that's what I'm going to drive on to here today with. Um, but as ever, thank you very much for being part of our community, or TUA is the word we use, and um, for following us along here on YouTube with the likes, subscribes, etc. So yeah, drive, diving straight into it. Definition, it's crucially important. And the thing that I wanted to kind of touch on today, it follows on from a community question. And it was a question around having kind of deities kind of step in or in some way possess a person to then speak through that person, to use that person's literal voice to kind of impart their message, their meaning, their will in to another individual in in you know physical format um and whether or not that occurs in irish lore or irish kind of experience or irish pagan experience um very commonly very commonly known sorry from a historical context is the oracle at delphi um who was an oracle to the god apollo and you know there was many different prophecies that this person would talk about now Again, that's not within the Irish wheelhouse, so I won't kind of step outside of my own kind of conversational circumstances here or area of expertise. But we do have the Morrigan listed as a goddess specifically of prophecy. Now, she's not just prophecy. Of course, she's also battle and poetry, um, but prophecy is in there as well. And so there are many different ways that the prophecy is performed. But the one that we see from the Irish lore is that, again, at the end of the Casmark tour at the second battle of Moitura, um, where the Fomorian invasion has occurred, the two of the Dan have met them. And there's been many lives lost. I've kind of touched on it in general in other areas. But the last thing that actually happens is the Morrigan's poetry. So when I mentioned it previously, I was talking about her as a goddess of poetry in that she stands and she observes, she witnesses what has happened and performs these kind of praise poetry, not even praise. It's almost like the record keeping, you know, putting it down, documenting it formally and placing it within memory because that was the function of the bard to make sure that things were witnessed, things were remembered, and that memory was then not lost by the retelling of the stories, by the passing on of the message, the memory is not lost. And so we have the Morrigan fulfilling that role at the end of this very significant battle for her tribe, the two of the Denon. Um, but the last section of the poems, there is three poems. The third one is a, a prophetic poem. So instead of talking about what she has seen in front of her, she talks about the future. She talks about, you know, what's going to come of Ireland after the fact, how it's going to grow, how it's going to be abundant, how like, you know, there will be a restoration, there will be kind of growth again. But then she goes further and she says that there will be times of trial. She said that, like, you know, sons will turn against fathers, daughters will turn against mothers, that there will be strife, that there will be conflict, you know, that invariably, you know, there will be good times, there will also be bad times, there will be difficult times. But kind of the, the underlying thread really is that Ireland will endure. That like, you know, there will always be difficult times. True, but there will be continuance. There will be abundance after that. So it's this kind of po pro prophetic performance that we wanted to touch on here. And in as the Morgan is a deity herself, and she's the one delivering those words, this is not a case of invocation or evocation because she's just actually delivering the content herself. But we do come across it in other kind of spiritual circumstances and practices that there are times when, you know, deity kind of steps in or is invited in to then, you know, impart information, messages and stuff like that. Now, I'm not going to talk about any specific practice here. I'm not going to step into particularly forms of, 
spiritual work or anything like that. I'm not going to tell you how this is done because that would be horribly irresponsible for me to do in a public format and forum like YouTube. Um, but I think it's important to make sure that we do talk about the wording involved and talking about the definitions and the understanding of what is happening here. Um, and that is the intent of this video. So, uh, oh, by the way, a lot of those kind of specific practices in how to are held within closed or reserved spiritual practices or circumstances. Anyone who is actually just offering you that straight out of the door should be met with a red flag you know normally there would be some building of relationship there would be a building of understanding before someone steps into the role of invoking or evoking spirit or deity within their existence for us here at the irish pagan school we talk about this core quiveness this right relationship and building up your relationship with yourself with the healthy ego with your own spiritual sensitivity so that when you get to the point of interacting with deity um, or spirit or, or entities or energies, you're able to kind of do it from a very strong baseline of centered self power and personal sovereignty, because that is your protection. So when we talk about anyway, point to definition, um, if you are, say, using a, some form of oracular tool, most commonly, you know, you might find tarot cards reading cards, some people use pendulums, some people use kind of diagrams. There's many different ways um, to actually engage in that kind of process. Um, some do it like via guided meditation or practices or journeyings and stuff like that. Um, if you are asking the question of the deity and seeking the answer directly de delivered to you through the medium of a tool, what the practice you're generally involved in there is what's commonly referred to as invocation. So you're kind of reaching out, you're putting yourself in that position of connection with the source to have your question answered and you're using some intermediary tool to do that. Um, the evocation is, is not that. Evocation is where you are using yourself as the tool. You become the medium or the bridge by which the deity or the spirit is then able to provide its communication. So now, if you were to Google kind of evocation and invocation, you'll find that evocation references invoking of a spirit or deity or God, and then invoking invocation references like an incantation of spirit, like that actually occurs quite commonly. There is during the, the Christian mass or celebration, there is an invocation, there is a ritual, there is an incantation of work that is done or prayer that is offered that invokes the deity in that in in that instance again i'm speaking from experience here because i was raised as a christian and catholic but it is an invocation ritual to bring the deity's focus onto the offerings of the bread and the wine um at no point is the priest bringing the deity into themselves to speak even when you know you act you, you work within confession within that kind of spiritual or dogma um the the priest is kind of intermediating but not actually in evocating the deity into themselves um but we do see that in pagan circles in pagan practices that there are times where certain seasons cycles certain kind of processes you know involve a certain level of evocation and again it's something to be very cautionary around because anyone who's kind of stepping into that needs to be very practice skilled needs to kind of have a very, very solid sense of self to be able to step their own ego aside to make themselves that vessel for that evocation. Um, but then also to come back from that and to restore themselves within themselves. Now, I know that probably doesn't sound very sensible, but what in essence is happening is that, a person is putting their own sense of identity outside of themselves or aside within themselves and making space for the deity to kind of step in and use the physicality of their form to impart their message. Now, um, there is lots of examples, again, going into the, the various sacraments from Christianity and Catholicism um, around possession. You know, it, it was something that is still within living memory where priests of that would perform exorcisms for possession. Um, 
that can occur when someone doesn't have healthy boundaries around themselves for personal sovereignty, healthy energetic work. That again, those spiritually sensitive people that I mentioned in other videos who aren't empowered with spiritual sensibility through skill without being able to build up the fact that it is a skill. You work with your sensitivity and your spiritual sensitivity to be able to fine tune your recognition of self and what is outside of yourself, what influences are outside of yourself and then how to, you know, define your own energetic boundaries and look after your own sense of self from a point of self-care. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to talk about the idea of definition. So when we're talking about in, invocation it is usually some other medium that is allowing or in facilitating your connection with spirit with deity um i suppose okay i'm gonna i'm gonna give you a cautionary tale i am gonna give you a cautionary tale and it is from direct personal experience of me so i'll do my best to kind of limit this down um content warning for mention of alcohol use just in case anyone needs to kind of skip away because i want to show respect for that as well um so i was invited to participate in the sanctification of a space at a pagan convention and um, there was a group who kind of regularly kind of set up a temple honoring the the irish deities at this convention and i'm the, I'm the guy for many of them and I'm honored by that I'm humbled by that and so they asked me to kind of step into the ritual space for you know invoking deities in invoking the awareness and the attention of the deities to the defined temple space so that people attending the convention would have space to go to and worship or space that they can go to and step away from you know the other noise of stuff and just go directly to connect with themselves or with deity in question. And so I was asked to, to invoke or call in the attention of the data. And I was honored, very humbled to do it. And I'm, I'm very glad that I did. But I made a mistake. And the mistake was that during the ritual, I spoke Osquelga in Irish and I called upon Daitas like, you know, Tarog is you, like come and be welcome um, on Dagda. That's his name. That's, you know, call him by his name. But I had also brought an offering of um, whiskey from Ireland, so which, you know, it was there to kind of bring over and to make offerings as needs be. And so I opened the bottle in that temple space as part of that invocation um, to pour him, pour for him into an offering bowl on the altar, which I did. But then some foolish part of me um, said the words, Beg Misha Ego, Veg Tosa Ego, which translates as pretty much the intentionality behind it was that my intentionality behind it was, you know, if I'm drinking, you can drink. You know, it's, it's the whole idea that, like, let's drink together. You know, I probably should have said, you know, Ego Lekela, which is, you know, drinking together. But unfortunately, I said, you know, when I drink, you drink. So within the ritual space, within the energetic intentionality, regardless of my fumbled attempt at it, what I did was I accidentally evoked the Dagda to use my, my body for alcohol consumption. And it wasn't great. <laughs> um. Again, apologies for anyone else here. It is one of those circumstances where I made a mistake. Now, I made a mistake with one of the most forgiving deities I've come across, and I'm very, very grateful for that. Um, him and I have a really very strong relationship before and up to that point and since that point, because I had, again, been working with that intentionality around my own spiritual practice, around my own personal sovereignty, so that when I did you know, step into the role of being the Dag the Bard. When I chose to get a Dag the Tattoo upon my skin, I knew I had done the, the build-up work. But I had never engaged in evocation myself, and I had no intention of engaging in evocation. But unfortunately, that's what I did. And so when the ritual finished, and like, you know, we people then began to, you know, leave the temple space to socialize and stuff, I'm still holding this bottle of whiskey, 
that I had offered to the Dagda. And I wasn't really aware what I had done until someone asked me, could they have some of the whiskey? And I tried to hand them the bottle, but my fist wouldn't let go. It was stuck to my hand. And I'm not like, it's one of the oddest. I wasn't afraid. And that's, that's one thing I want to be very clear on here. My relationship with the Dagda, with the God had been built to such a degree that I was not afraid. But within that moment, I realized what I had done, that the words I had used had been evocation. I had essentially said an incantation, which led to evocation instead of an incantation, which led to invocation. Again, if you remember the idea of the, the Christian ritual in, in mass, you know, you say the words, you say the prayers and you invoke the attention of the deity onto the thing. Unfortunately, I was supposed to be a, invoking his attention onto the altar and the altar space but i evoked him into sharing a bottle of whiskey with me and so i could not take the bottle of whiskey out of my hand and i then needed to consume the entire bottle of whiskey now i did it responsibly you know i wasn't an idiot about it i didn't kind of just down the entire bottle but i sat in company with lots of other people aware very aware of what was actually happening because I told them I made certain people I knew I could rely on and knew would understand and respect what was happening, aware of what was happening. So I wasn't going through it alone. I had the right structures around me, but I ended up drinking an entire bottle of whiskey at that event, which I am a human. I, I'm a big guy, you know, I, I, but still. So whilst the Dagda was with me, and we were consuming, it was great. And it was fantastic. And, you know, we carried on, it was a very entertaining and I was as I was even more gregarious than normal, I believe. Um, other people were kind of aware it was going on. So it was a safe space. It was done as safely as could be done. But there is always kind of aftermath. And so I am a human mortal body. And so my human mortal body had to process the poisons of an entire bottle of whiskey, which led to a lot of concern for my partner, Laura O'Brien. Um, and, you know, thankfully I survived with God-given support, no doubt, and was up and around the next day to many people's surprise, actually. Um, but that is really, I'm not telling you the story as a, oh, well, hey, yeah, John drank it at heart. No, no that, that's not it at all. The reason, the moral of this story, the reason I'm telling you this story is that if you're not careful, if you're not aware, if you're not conscious about the difference between incantation and evocation and the wording that you're using, the incantations that you're using, the prayers that you're using around your spiritual growth and your spirituality, then you can end up in trouble. It can actually happen. Now, again, I'm very fortunate that I was with Dagda. I'm very, very kind of grateful that I had built up such a strong and stable relationship with the deity over the period of time. But I'm not a fool. And so looking at this in a different kind of light, if I had have not had the safety and structure of Tua and community around me, if I had not had the safety of a built stable relationship approaching the data from a position of personal sovereignty, personal energetic responsibility, sensibility. It could have been a lot worse. So hopefully <laughs> that is an interesting experience for you. Again, I'm not trying to scare. I'm not, I'm not in any kind of way talking scare tactics here. I'm, I'm trying to just tell you a story that is my direct experience of accidental evocation saying to show that yes it is possible it is absolutely possible multiple people talk to me um during that incident and i don't recall exactly what was said now again that might have been because of the the alcohol going through my system like the poisons going through my system or it might have been because you know they got answers from someone else who was using me at the time now some people have actually come back and said you know, the thing you said, and I was like, yeah, I don't exactly remember that, haha, <laughs> alcohol. But they were like, no, no, it wasn't alcohol, it was him. Now, I don't have a practice of evocation. I, I don't do that. That is not part of my spiritual practice. But it is part of some spiritual practices out there 
invariably part of a closed practice that you move towards as part of your growth within that spiritual practice. And um, not all paganism involves evocation, but some practices do. So it's worth, you know, if you're starting along on your journey, knowing the words, the invocation and the evocation, knowing the difference, so that if you do come to a point where that is part of your stepping stones in your spiritual growth, in your plan of pagan growth, you might know a little bit better. Or you might be a little bit more informed. And that's what it is about at the end of the day. Like, you know, we run the Irish Pagan School to provide information, the best information we can to kind of provide the best resources we can and to kind of help wherever we can. So from all of us here, thank you very, very much, Gurv Mila Mahaga, for being with us. Look after yourself, take care of yourself. And um, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Slán.